Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to continue our discussion about newly discovered white dwarfs, specifically 13,928 of them in the vicinity of our sun that are actually not on the list here because this is an older simulation that doesn't include those stars and because those stars don't even have names just yet. And today we're going to talk about an idea of one of them going supernova. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So right here on the screen, we have a lot of different stars. Most of them are red dwarfs, but some of them, like Sirius B, that's right next to the main Sirius A star, are white dwarfs. Now, we discovered about 13,000 in the vicinity of, a, I guess, a sphere that's about this big right here. And so imagine in here, there's actually 13,000 or almost 14,000 more white dwarfs. The thing about white dwarfs is that um, normally, they are relatively stable. But if it's a binary star, specifically a star that has a, some sort of a companion, normally a red dwarf or another white dwarf in orbit around it, kind of like this, it might actually at some point come closer and closer to its partner. And the thing about white dwarfs is that if they actually reach the critical mass of 1.39 masses of the sun, so in this case, let's actually maybe just decelerate one of them until it comes closer, they will basically go supernova. And this supernova has a name. This is a type 1a supernova. That's maybe not as powerful as type 2 supernova, which is when a big star goes uh, boom or explodes, um, but type 1a is also um, a type of a supernova that might occur a little bit more often. Now, there are at least um, half of those 13,000 white dwarfs that we discovered that actually have a partner. In other words, in this sort of a sphere, there are about maybe 6,000 or so binary white dwarfs, and those binary white dwarfs have a slight chance of one day going supernova. Now, we don't really know when it's going to happen, but we know that it will probably happen. As a matter of fact, in the last few million years, we've experienced a uh, nearby supernova at least uh, a couple of times. And there's actually an interesting study that tried to study uh, the effects of the supernova that happened about 2.5 million years ago, and also about um, 8 million years ago on Earth, and those effects were actually quite profound. So let's actually place Earth here for a second. I'm going to simulate all of this right now. Uh, Earth is going to be right here. Um, so even though those stars are relatively far away, and even though those white dwarfs, if they go supernova or when they go supernova, they're still going to be pretty far away, the effects on Earth are quite noticeable. So let's actually just take Sirius B, for example, and let's just go ahead and explode it. In other words, let's imagine that one of those white dwarfs, of those thousands of white dwarfs we discovered, reaches its uh, Chandrasekhar limit, which is the critical mass before it goes supernova, and then it sort of explodes and creates a beautiful, uh, incredible light in the sky. Now, one thing about it is that if it's within about 100 parsec or about 326 light years away from us, it has a very high chance of influencing our atmosphere. If it's within about 20 light years away from us, it has a very high chance of causing some serious destruction on the planet. And if it's even closer, then, well, we're probably all gonna die. But it's unlikely to be any closer. So there is the supernova, type 1a supernova from Sirius B. And as you can see, it's, it's growing pretty fast. Like this is only about a year after the explosion and it's already really big in the sky. Now, uh, within about uh, six years, this is when the first light started hitting our planet, and this is when the highest energy particles will start arriving as well. Those high energy particles will most likely affect uh, the ozone layer and actually strip some of it, but here's the thing about supernova. It doesn't just happen all at once. When it when a star explodes like this, it actually releases materials uh, of different energy at different speeds. Some materials move really fast, some move slower, and some move really slow. And um, we can actually measure a lot of this stuff 
by looking at sediments on Earth. So this is exactly what those scientists did. They actually looked at sediments from two and a half million years ago and eight million years ago and discovered that for about a thousand years, various particles were still arriving to the planet and causing all sorts of trouble. So first, the high energy particles arrived, stripped some of the ozone, decreasing the ozone layer by about 30%, which is quite a lot. And then um, other particles started to arrive and change atmosphere in other ways as well. And the thing is, for about a thousand years, our ozone layer kept uh, decreasing anywhere between 15 to 25%. And this is actually quite significant. And this by itself would be enough to dramatically change the evolution of life on Earth. And this is kind of what it ha what happened, actually. One of the reasons those scientists actually started to study um, or tried to study supernova effects on Earth was because they discovered that 2.5 million years ago and also 8 million years ago, there was a significant change in evolutionary um, progress of life. So basically, uh, life started changing quite dramatically. There was a lot of new species or a lot of species actually went extinct for some reason. And some scientists thought it was effects of some kind of a stellar event. And they were most likely right. It was most likely a supernova that occurred uh, not far away from our planet Earth. So right around now, uh, we are going to start receiving all sorts of different um, particles arriving to our planet. And... For the next thousand years, we're going to be actually experiencing the effects of this event. Even when the actual light is gone, there are still going to be particles arriving here at all times. And a lot of those are actually quite measurable. As a matter of fact, one of the most common particles that will arrive to our planet is going to be a type of iron. Uh, and the most common uh, type of iron that's going to be hitting our planet is actually iron um, 60. It's an isotope of iron that is easy to detect in our uh, uh, sediment layers. And so um, this will be happening for at least a thousand or even more years. And during that time, if there are still humans here, they're going to basically experience quite a lot of unusual effects, including, of course, uh, well, due to decreases in ozone layer and also increases in various cosmic rays arriving, uh, various types of new um, radiation arriving to the planet, there's going to be a lot of mutations in the population of humans, uh, thus increasing the chance of basically new species coming out of all of this. And this is kind of what we experienced 2.5 million years ago and also 8 million years ago, uh, extinctions and completely new species. Now, these effects are still not really well understood and we still don't really exactly know um, what the actual supernova might do to our planet and to our life on Earth because we haven't really experienced it. All of this is still theoretical based on observation from millions of years ago. But nevertheless, we think that it's not going to be very good. Uh, but what is the actual chance of this happening in our lifetime? Well, very, 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 very low. What is the chance of this happening in the next thousand years? That's actually another question. As a matter of fact, because of these new white dwarfs we discovered, the chance of at least one of them possibly going supernova within the next thousand or maybe few thousand years is actually maybe a little bit higher. But what about a million years? Well, that's actually really high. The chance of experiencing a supernova in the next million years, relatively close to Earth, is suddenly a lot higher than it used to be, mostly because of this new discovery. Now, in a Universe Sandbox, I think um, when this wave hits our planet, our planet actually starts is going to start uh, heating up really quickly, and I think this is kind of what's happening to right now. Uh, but I want to see what actually happens to the surface of the planet when the supernova actually arrives here. And it looks like uh, nothing really happened. It seems that our planet is actually just fine. but the radiation levels here are clearly a lot more dramatic than they used to be. Now, one interesting thing about this new discovery of the white dwarfs, and of course, the idea of uh, supernova influencing our planet in different ways, is that this will actually help us understand um, how the climate changes as well. The actual supernova effects will not just uh, decrease the ozone layers, but they'll also change the atmospheric composition. And this can technically lead to climatic changes. So it's possible that um, various changes in the climate throughout the years and um, throughout the history of the planet were actually because of these cosmic events 
Oh, and as you can see, there's actually another supernova that just occurred. I think there was another star that possibly collided with some something else. And um, so studying these effects is really important because it allows us to predict what might actually happen to our planet and when we might consider kind of finding a new home because it's possible that some of these events will actually make our planet somewhat less habitable for humans and um, will obviously create conditions kind of beneficial for some other species that might not be us. So we do need to start looking for a new home and or we need to actually find a technique to prevent these events from affecting our planet too much. Because in the past, as the uh, various deposits and fossils uh, tell us, the effects were quite dramatic. An extinction of many, many species usually followed these events as well. So for all we know, this could be actually the end of humanity if we actually get to experience such an event. And other than that, that's actually all we wanted to say in this video. I kind of wanted to just briefly just explain how this new finding might actually influence our understanding of nearby neighborhood, but also how uh, these various stars that we discovered might actually be responsible for the demise of the human species. Not necessarily, but there's still a slight chance. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye bye. And by the way, a lot of this was actually based on a study from uh, Washburn University in Kansas. And the principal investigator was Brian Thomas. He actually discovered uh, a lot of these unusual effects of um, basically a supernova in the fossil record from about 2.5 million years ago, and then published it in the magazine of astrobiology.